I didn't feel like doing my hair. Yes, this is editor to me. Okay, I had to crop the video for y'all because I didn't want to make it too long. I don't want to make it too long. I know y'all wasn't going to watch it. It was an hour and 20 minutes long. Come on, man. What's going on, YouTube? It's Jordan here. And today we are back playing Dream Daddy. Dream Daddy. I really don't have much of an intro because, like I said, this is editor to me. All I can say is we should have never slept with Deep Pickle. I'm sorry. But I had to. I'm being down low in this series today, okay? Now nah, we're, we're gonna get back to it. Morning, sleepyhead, wake up. Come on, five more minutes, get out. Five more minutes. You have never let me have five minutes, so get up. Five minutes? I just want to sleep a little longer. My bad. <laughs> We have cereal for breakfast and spend the morning putting together furniture. Amanda is much better at interpreting the tiny manuals. We're able to put together a few shelves and one desk, but I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be a bookcase. Yeah. So, you're excited for the cookout? Uh oh, we're going to the cookout. They, they better, he better season his stuff or I'm leaving. If there's food, I'm excited. I'm a, man, what? I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the turn up person. Like, what are you talking about? I'm not gonna be the, mm, well, no, that's boring. We don't wanna have a boring experience. We're gonna get this on and popping, okay? I'll see this as a learning opportunity. If I can snake some hot grill tips, I think we can consider it a, a success. Mm -hmm. Don't you wanna meet, wait, don't you wanna meet some of the people in the neighborhood? We done met, what, I think this is dude named Joseph. There's, Craig, see, Craig, I can only remember Craig because, you know, that is my father's name. Um, I hope you don't get mad that I said what his real name is, but he will be a okay. Okay? I'll probably end up standing uncomfortably in the corner with a plate of food and hope that nobody talks to me. Oh. Uh, lame, 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 lame. Tomato, 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 I'm throwing tomatoes. Dad, you're a beautiful work in pro progress. We will get that butterfly to emerge hmm. from the cocoon. The social butterfly? Well, we better start getting ready. We definitely don't want to be late. Huh? What? No, we have to be fashionably late. Who shows up to a cookout on time? Come on, man, you're, you're, yeah, we don't show up on time. Cause when we show up on time, that means we gotta help them set that stuff up because they, they started late. Like, come on, man. Know yourself. <laughs> You know what? We're going early just because you said that. I headed out the door and Amanda relu reluctantly follow followed. We walked across the street to Joseph's house with the store bought veggie plate. I'm terrible. I'm a terrible cook if it doesn't involve a grill. Hmm. Ooh, bossy grill. Okay, I guess we're not as early as we thought we were. Joseph's backyard is already packed with people and the smell of hot dogs. Wow. Through the air, small children run through a sprinkler, and adults chat in small clusters. So I wonder, like, all the people that we met is gonna be here because if the man that I gave it up to is there, ooh, that's not gonna be a nice sight. I set our veggie plate down on the table next to two other veggie plates. Huh? Hey, there's Joseph. I wave to get his attention. The moment he sees us, he jogs over, arms open wide. He oh. seems nice. I mean, I I, I, I like him because he's, he's nice. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of, like, when it comes to this generation, right? You got a lot of rude bitches, you know? You got a lot of rude bitches because they think that shit's cute, right? So, meeting a nice person that just have a ball of energy, they're just a joy to be around. They have nice energy that you, that you can feel. It is radiating. That's who you want to be with. All them rude bitches that got the stankiest face possible. I know I have one, but when you talk to me, I'm nice. Welcome, I'm so glad you two are here. And you bought veggies. Hmm. Let me introduce you to my family. Kids, come over here. This is Chris, my eldest. Yeah. Hi, oh. <laughs> what, what, what I say? What I say? You see his face? Girl. <laughs> this is Christian and Christy. They're twins. <laughs> I didn't even read the caption and you can see it in my face like yeah they look they look yeah sleep with one eye open that's all I was gonna say right mm -hmm. then of course there's our youngest Chris wait 
Where is Chris? Maybe Mary put him in his crib. I seen that now. But I made that face because. No. Do not tell me. Oh, hell no, man. What the fuck? <laughs> she would. She. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You see what I said? You wanna know my secrets? She she she's a she's she's a bunny. She hops. She hops. Yeah. Oh no, it's the woman from the bar the other night. What is she doing here? That's his wife, and she got a look. I'm not a Christian. She's a sinful ass bitch. <laughs> you see the cross on her neck? Oh, and how can I forget my lovely wife? Oh man, it's one of these. God damn it. The other pecks are on the cheek and she smiles. Ah, Mary, sweetheart. Did you put Chris to bed? Mm. I'll have to go look for him. What? You'll have to. Joseph takes a moment and regains his composure. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Let me, girl. It's like there's so many things that's running in my mind that I feel like I can't say because I don't want to get booted. But like, if you if, look at my face and you'll understand. Yeah. Right. Mary, this is our new neighbor, James and his daughter Amanda. Ah. I shake your hand, but I have a glass of wine that I need to tend to. I love her. Nice to uh, meet you, Mary, for the first time. Charmed. Well, I have to go over there now. Mary leaves. Oh, God, this is so awkward. I wonder if Joseph knows. I wonder if Mary knows that Joseph knows. I wonder if Joseph knows that Mary knows that I know, right? That's what I'm saying. It takes all my energy to not run away from the barbecue and start fresh in a new city. <laughs> my wife has a wonderful sense of humor, but please, you two, enjoy the barbecue. All the guys are really excited to meet you. Amanda and I mill around and try some of the food spread out on the table. I pick at some devil eggs. Oh, that sounds good. Amanda grabs a small paper plate and immediately begins piling it with fake goods. Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to have to make friends. Come on, Dad. You're gonna party with when I go off to school. Wait, where are you gonna party when I get off of school? I think that's what she said. But I don't want to meet these pleasant trees. Mm -hmm. Dad, Dad, stop being stop being a, 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 a woods. Like, come on, man. Ugh, they're gonna talk about the weather. Dad. Go do it. Make a friend. Someone. Anyone. Come on. Come on. You, you, come on, man. You gave it up on the first night. You can definitely make a friend. Come on now. But how can I possibly abandon my only child at a fuck at a social function? That's bad parenting. <laughs> this plate of cookies is my new dad. Bye. Get, like, go on somewhere. Amanda shoves me into the center of the yard. Well, here goes nothing. I look around the party and surprised to see some familiar faces. The parti no, isn't that the Bartista from the coffee spoon? Oh, dang. Robert, that's his name. See, I couldn't remember what his name was. Yeah. We're gonna, what are, what are, what are we gonna call him? We're gonna call him something. We can't call him Robert. No. We're gonna call him... What can we call him? Dill pickle. Dick pickle. Can I say that on, on YouTube? Dick pickle? Mr. Dick pickle? Mr. D pickle? How about that? Mr. D pickle. Cause I don't wanna I don't wanna get booted, right? We're not gonna call him Robert. We're gonna call him Mr. D pickle. Didn't that guy throw a frisbee at my head? Yes. Isn't that the guy who was throwing a fit in Dad Golf and Beyond? Isn't that Amanda's teacher? Hey, I know Greg. But wait a second, all these people live in our cold de sac That can't be right. I better investigate. Talk to Joseph and Damien? No. We're gonna talk to Matt, Hugo, and Craig. I don't wanna talk to Mr. D Pickle. F him. I don't wanna talk to Brian either. Ain't the Brian guy the one that threw the frisbee at my head? I don't wanna talk to him. Oh. What's up, what's up, what's up, Matt, Hugo? Matt and Hugo seem to be embroiled in an intense discussion. Greg looks on, smiling politely. I walk over and say hello. Well, I don't think it's fair to try and compare two art movements like that. Here, oh, no, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. I don't care. I don't care. We don't care. Thank you. 
I don't care, okay? Matt and Hugo seem to be busy talking about... Matt and Hugo seem to be so busy talking that they don't notice me. Craig leans in. Dude, I have no idea what's happening. Listen on to Matt and... It. No, I don't care, okay? I turn my attention to Craig, who seems a little more attentive to my existence. I resisted training go the other day. Oh. Great. Little River here is a great cheerleader. Aren't you tiny, bro? Craig grabs River's arms and waves him around. Oh, because he's so cute. You can do it, Dad. I'm so proud of you. I'm sorry for poofing on you. She must be a handful at that age. Oh, oh they always are. Always. <laughs> My niece and nephew. My nephew. <laughs> But it's so worth it. No, it's not. Okay. Craig grabs River's arms again and waves them around. Also, I'm sorry for throwing up on you, Dad. Mm. How are you settling in? Um, I never get too comfortable. No, this side of the place is perfect. Like, he's so lame. It's really cozy and the neighborhood is beautiful. I'm so glad we moved here. Oh. And I'm even more glad that we that we're right next to my old best friend. Craig gives me a playful punch on the shoulder. Ow. I remember that hurting less in the past. Oh. Sorry, sorry. I've been doing push-ups and stuff. You see how he's ripped? Like, but he, he's, he's slim. Hey, like, come on. James, how are you liking the neighborhood? Oh, Hugo said that. Right. Okay, it's pretty nice. Everybody been so friendly. If I mess up the words, just go with it. Seems like your daughter is fitting in just fine. Matt points across the yard to where Amanda, da Daisy, and another young girl are playing. They're all sitting, they're all sitting cross-legged in the grass, picking weeds and weaving them into a little flower crown. It's pretty adorable. The girl I don't recognize jogged over to us. What is it, sweetheart? Oh, I think they're a little rude. It's a flower crown. I thought you would look cute in it. Hey. Well, there's only one way to find out. Matt takes the flower crown and puts it on top of his head like a, the king key that he is. Oh. Okay? Am I cool now? Hell yeah. Curls dancing, yo. Thinking, thinking it over. Hmm. No, you're still slightly less uncool than you were before. Before you put it on. Hey, James, this is my daughter. Hello. What's her name? I'm. What? Girl, that is so ghetto. Carmen. 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 Carmista? Carmistia? Carmista? Carmen. That's her name. Amanda comes over with Daisy in tow. Dad, look, I'm making friends. But ain't she. Ain't Amanda like a senior and she's 10? I don't think so. You wanna know why I said that? Because you know how Amanda been talking about her friends? You know, you know. Are you making friends? You better be making friends. Yeah, actually, Amanda, you remember the cool bar Bartista from the coffee shop and my old college friend and uh, your teacher? Huh? Oh, hi, Mr. Vega. I didn't realize we were neighbors. Oh. Yep. You still gonna get me that overdue term paper? Ugh. Oh, ain't you out? Girl, don't do that. Great seeing you. Amanda finger guns her way out of the conversation like a champ. She leaned the finger gun move from me. I'm, oh, she learned it. Okay, uh -huh. goddamn, I'm not reading this right. She's definitely a charmer. Speaking of which, where did my son go? Huh? Hugo looks around the party. He must he find he must finally spot him because his eyes go wide. What? Ernest! Ernest Hemingway Vega! Are you smoking? Oh. Ernest is holding a lit cigarette. Oh! No. I see Ernest across the way. He casually takes a long drag of his cigarette and then flicks it into the gutter. Oh. Unbelievable. Excuse me. He will march over to Ernest and I turn my attention to Matt and Craig. Oh, how you want to do that to your teacher? Your teacher has a... What's that word? What's that word? A reputation to a old, and you smoking a cigarette? Like, oh, kids, right? Man, I do not envy Hugo. The last barbecue we had, Ernest tried to shove a sparkler down Joseph's pants, nearly burned down half of the yard. Wow, that is crazy. And the barbecue we had before that, he actually burned down half of the yard. Ooh, and then it spread onto my lawn and burned down half of my yard. Lock his ass up. You going to jail? Ooh, ooh. Mm -mm. We gotta give 
him a haircut. We gotta give him some skin care. Go get you some. Go get you some Cetaphil. You know what I'm saying? Go get you. Go get you some of that Neurogena. Like you know, like oh, oh. He will walk back over to us, practically dragging Ernest behind him. Um, hey, everybody, sorry about that, James. This is my son, Ernest. Hello. Ernest looks away, sulking, his hands shoved deep in his pockets. Hugo nudges him impatiently. He needs to shave that, too. Yeah. Okay. Nice to meet you, Ernest. What grade are you in? Does it matter? Oh. Ernest. Okay, okay. I'm in the eighth grade. God, are you happy now? I'm sure you are just fine to know. Eighth grade? That means you 13 years old smoking a cigarette? I know you're lying. He do not need to go to the school that his dad work at. No, 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 no. Bring him to another school because he's going to mess up your reputation. No, man. Um, yeah. Good for you. Hmm. Can I go now? I'm tired of talking to old dudes who blame my generation for the failing economy. Well, if you're 13, I don't think you're in our generation, so... Besides, that's a little fucked up. Like, we're not failing this economy. The government is... No. But, you know, that's a conversation for another day. I don't really know my politics, but yeah, ouch. My uh. bad. Ernest! Oh, yeah, because I'm totally embarrassing you. Ernest puts earbuds in and storms off to stand in the corner. Well, that was... That was certainly something. He seems nice. Hugo puts his head in his hands and sighs. Oh. I'm so sorry. He's having a really tough time. As much as I want to be a cool dad, I have to be the... Uh, uh, authoritarian. He has to be the stubborn dad. How about that? And he clearly resents me for it. I mean, I think as a dad and a teacher, that's about as... Stern as you can get. Hmm. Good grief. Honestly, are any of us cool dads? Is it even possible to be a cool dad? What? I'm cool as a cucumber. See, that right there, you can't say that. See? He's lame. I don't know. My kids think I'm cool. But for how long, Greg? How long do we get to be cool dads? Oh. I, uh, don't know. That's a good hey. question. I think we should have to accept... Wait, we... we I think we should just have to accept the fact that as dads, we become the machine we once raged against and accept our fate to unironically wear socks with sandals. Your kids may think you're cool now, but but the moment they hit puberty, you're doomed. A man is 18 and she thinks I'm cool. I yell across the yard to my daughter. Oh, so she's 18 being friends with a 10-year-old? See, I... Amanda, I'm cool, right? Amanda just laughs. She keeps laughing. I see your point. Um, as much as we all want it, I don't think it's, it's as important to be a cool dad as it is to be a good dad. We can't all we can't all be best friends with our kids. It just doesn't work. I mean, look at me and Ernest. Oh. Um, your child needs therapy because I bet you the mother is not in the house. All these mothers just up and left all of them. Except Mary, but we see how Mary is. Mary is a <gasps> okay. So it's like this is they don't have the they don't have the mother to nurture them and to tell them it's okay. Okay, they don't have that emotional support. They have the logical support from a dad. They don't have the emotional support that they need from a mother. Okay, our job as parents is to make sure our kids turn out okay. Yeah, you're right. But it'd be nice to have it both ways. Hearing these guys talk about this makes me think of my relationship with Amanda. We get along so well, but there might come a time when it won't be like that. Is college when that happens? Ah. Don't let us eat up your time, James. Loan me some of the other people around the neighborhood. Uh, I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk to Robert, but we're going to talk to him. I'm going to talk to Deacon Pickle. He had a whiskey in his hand. Good grief. I walk over to Robert and Brian who are chatting over drinks, determined not to be weird about what happened that night. I hope Dill Pickle feels the same. Hey, guys. <laughs> James! How the heck are you? Settling into the neighborhood already? Right? 
Oh, you betcha. Got the living room in order, at least. That's great to hear. I've been doing some living room work as well. Finally got the 50-inch in there. The game looks great in high def. Oh, boy. James, have you met D. Pickle yet? Yes. I believe we met. Briefly. Oh. Sup, Nick? I'm sorry. D. Pickle takes a long sip of his whiskey. Why do he keep drinking? I hope he ain't got no call if he drinking like this. Ain't no way. D. Pickle robotically extends a hand. I shake it as he stares unbleakly into my eyes. Oh, goodness. What does that mean? Ah, how's it going? It's good. D. Pickle focuses on the whiskey he's holding and takes a long sip. Great. Look at my friends becoming friends. Dad's got to stick together, you know? Us dads? has a kid and he got down like that that he ripped my clothes off oh oh i didn't know you had kids these people continue to stare at me gee does this guy ever blink yep cool that's cool we stand in incredibly uncomfortable silence for several moments until we gotta get off this haunted truck. Oh no, the ghost locked the doors. Uh. Daisy and Amanda runs up to us. Thank goodness. Right. Quick, hit the emergency escape button. But trucks don't have emergency escape buttons. Uh. Uh, then hit the brakes, I guess. And then we'll get out of the truck. The imaginary truck. Anyway, we're safe from the ghost, but how will we ever survive this Arctic tundra? Daisy, you might have to eat me. Are you prepared to do that? I'm prepared to do anything to survive. Oh. Don't tear her up. Rip her, rip her leg by leg, limb by limb, and then eat the meat. That's cool. That's cold-blooded. I like that. Although I'm not sure I have the materials required to properly cook you. Wait a second. Are you guys playing Long Haul Ice Girl Paranormal Ghost Trippers? Yeah. Amanda and I love that show. It's the best, especially that episode where Caldum hides from Flint Keys and Flint by breaking an ancient curse art and sending the spirit after him. Yet yeah, it's such quality reality television. All right, Daisy, I found us a couple of bugs. They're gonna make a great meal. Lots of protein, gonna keep us from starving out here in the harsh, icy wasteland. But there's a Table of food right over there. Daisy, it's a game. We're playing pretend is what kids do. Live a little. Live a little. Eat the roach. Just eat it. Just eat it. Amanda gives Daisy a handful of gummy worms from the snack table. They eat them. They eat them with mock disgust. Let's go find kin wait, let's go find kin kindling for fire. Bye-bye. Okay. Oh. Would he get to meet his kid? We're not actual hard because we're playing pretend. Yes. Now you're getting it. Daisy and Amanda runs off. What a cute couple of kids. So, okay, um, we could meet Deep Pickle Shout, um, and then we gotta keep talking because after him, we gotta talk to Joseph and I can't remember who. And then we get to eat, and that's when I'm gonna end this because goodness. I turn my attention back to the conversation, but wait, where did Deep Pickle go? I'm sorry. I skip the party and finally find him in the corner talking to Mary. Does does he not want to talk? <laughs> Man, I've never seen her get along with anyone so quickly. I snap out of my D pickle induced haze. Oh look, 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 look. You know what that means, right? You know what that means. You put it on them. Put it on. <laughs> you put it on them. I guess the man just sort of has a way with kids. That's kind of that's kind of amazing. Daisy doesn't really get along with kids her age. Hmm. It's nice that he's not trying to one up me this time. Maybe we can have a regular friendship after all. Really? She just kind of keeps to herself. Her teachers say she spends every recess in the library. I think the other kids are intimidated by her intelligence. There it is. No, don't tell me we're about to fight again. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Daisy was shy. Oh wait, Amanda was shy at Daisy age two. She she used to have a habit of crawling under tables and crying every time we took her to a restaurant. 
She bit people. Ooh. Uh -huh. Oh, kids, right? Mm -mm. Gotta love them. You're required to by law. <laughs> well, since they're getting along so well, maybe we should try to put together a little play date for them. Yeah, that'd be nice. Well, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Go meet some of the other fellas. Okay, now we meet Joseph and Damien. So Joseph, Joseph was the, you know, he's the nice guy. Who's Damien though? Oh, Damien must be, he must be the, 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 the villain. The, the, the vampire, okay? I saw Joseph chatting with the guy from the dead golf and beyond by the grill. I wonder what they're talking about. I walk over to them. So I'm curious, can you walk me through why you had your house painted black? He is a vampire. I'm surprised he's even out in the daytime, okay? Where do I even start? The house stays warmer in, in the winter. It provides an artistic contrast to the rest of the neighborhood. Oh, and it complements the Chris, the cr crimson interior perfectly. Like, I, I'm, so, I'm assuming this color right here, because that's a pretty color. It's definitely an interesting choice. How delightful. Whoa, that was loud. Thank you. I'm very proud of my abode. James, I was just having a conversation with Damien here about his aesthetic design decisions. Damien regards me up and down with a warm and critical, but mm. critical eye. How do you do? I don't believe I've had the pleasure. I think I saw you in Dead Golf and Beyond the other day. Damien's face turns bright red. Mm-hmm, because you was acting a fool over a freaking shirt. I must apologize for my behavior on that day. You see, I take the golf lifestyle very seriously, and to be caught in a ruse by such a corporation as Dead Golf and Beyond was profoundly frustrating indeed. Huh. I hope you know that while my anger may have been justified, it was no such way for a gentleman to act. It's okay, man. It's hmm. Do tell me about yourself. Are you new to the area? Yes, my daughter and I just moved in the other day. She was the one I took to Dead Golf and Beyond. Huh. Very good taste on her part. Does she partake in the golf lifestyle? I think for a second, I look up to Amanda who's hanging out with some of the older kids in the neighborhood. What? Hey, Amanda, would you consider yourself golf? Amanda yells back. I wouldn't necessarily try to fall under anyone's specific label, but I guess if I had to choose, I would more describe myself as a twee hipster with some norm core leanings. Bats are cool though. Ah, pity. Hmm. Are you enjoying the party so far? Oh, definitely. Thank you so much for putting this on. It's nice to be in a cool de sac wearing it, where everyone is so friendly and welcoming. Amanda walks up to the conversation. I also like The Lost Boys a lot. Really good movie. Does that count as golf? That it would, my dear. I don't believe we had the pleasure of meeting. Damien Blood March at your service. Damien finished the sentence with a flourish and flourish and a bow, producing a single rose and offering it to Amanda. Amanda busted and returned the jester with a curtsy. We're all like, oh, thank you. You're a gentleman, okay? Ma, do you know how to treat a lady? Hey. Hello, Amanda. <laughs> Seemingly out of nowhere, Joseph's twins appear. Uh, are they speaking in unison? Yes. Hey. Won't you come play with it? No. Hell no. Fuck no. Like, let me, let me give it a buck with you. No. <laughs> um. Come play with us. Forever, I'm out. That, I, I don't even want a burger. I'm starving. I'm literally starving right now. I'm hungry. But if I'm gonna make some stuff at home, they probably put something in them burgers. She wasn't playing with them. Them little kids was playing with them. They over here talking. Who's at the grill? <laughs> no, 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 no. Guys, you know what the creepy twin just stick. We talked about this. Kristen, Kristen and Christy slowly back away. Where do you think they got that from? Mary pops into the conversation. <sighs> Wine in hand. Oh, I don't want to talk to her. Uh, I don't know. Mary takes a long sip of her wine. I think I might have taped over a VeggieTale VHS with The Shining. Who knows? She takes another sip of her wine. Get take the wine from her. Where's Chris? Come on. Wasn't he with you? Oh. You? Ha 
had him a moment ago. He probably stuffing dirt in his mouth. He'll be all right. Toddlers are pretty resilient. Mary tips her glass to me. Oh. Mm. Ain't my first time to the rodeo. It's my fourth. Ugh. I have squeezed four little sweetheart. Would you do me a favor and please find Chris? That would be great. Like, get on. I don't want to talk to you. You see, like, me talking to her, I got to give, like, this, ugh, bored dialogue because it's like, ugh, go somewhere, sweetheart. <laughs> I'm sure he's fine. Divorce her. I'm surprised she ain't got a cigarette in her hand. Yeah. Mary. Mm. Okay. Jeez. Mary finishes her wine and wanders off. Dad, can we go? Get your ass on. That's his... Oh, I thought that was Joseph's. I thought that was Joseph's kid. I'm about to say, I know you blind. Ah, Lu Lucian, have I introduced you to James yet? Uh, hey, is that the punk from Amanda's school? Yes, it is. I remember you. Whatever. Like, get out my face. Go somewhere. That's no way for a young man to speak to his elders. Be polite, or you won't get that tap tap in front of everyone. He bows. Okay, whatever, sir. Lucian bows again. Mr. Cr Christian, Chris, Chris, girl, may I have a veggie burger, sir? Coming right up. Oh, that's his last name. So he's a Christian family. Y'all know how Christian families be, bro. Not all Christians. I do know a lot of Christians. My family is Christian, you know, but you know how these type of Christian families are, right? They got a lot of, like, dirt inside the family that we don't know. Coming right up, bud, are you vegetarian? Yup. Huh. Make that two veggie burgers. Did you know that some people in the Victorian era were vegetarians? They describe carn carnivorous type people as blood lacquers. Don't let my boyfriend see this because he's a vegetarian and if, and if he called me that, we're going to have a problem. We might fight on site because who is you talking to? Dad, that's really interesting, Damien. Joseph turns to the grill, just a hint of, of a tattoo peeks out underneath his sleeve. I can't believe I didn't notice it before. It looks like the bottom of an anchor. Whoa, is that a tattoo? Wow. Yep. I wasn't always a youth pastor, you know. That's so cool. Want to see mine? What? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You see what it says? It says 666. Oh. <laughs> okay. Lucien pulls back some rubber bracelets, re revealing a lopsided 666 in black ink. My buddy gave me a stick and a poke tattoo last week. I think it's healing up pretty good. Lucien! We'll talk about this later. I just want to burp her. That's pretty cool. What's the significance of the tattoo? I don't know. I just thought it looked sick. Well, in my opinion, the only reason you need to get a tattoo is because you want one. Careful though, that number carries weight. Man, Joseph is a way cooler youth pastor than I thought. I just figured youth pastors popped out of the womb with the Bible. I wonder what he did before preaching. Oh. We don't even need to know. And without further ado, let's work some magic. Joseph closes his eyes, take a deep breath, and get to work with the greatest of ease. Oh, this is a long, long, long dinner. Wow. He sets patties on the grill, flourishing as he flips his spatula in the air. It's easily some of the best grill work i ever seen. You guys think this is my first time in front of a grill? He's working fast now, effort, effortless, effortlessly tossing cheese onto patties and perfectly grilling onions on the side. One after the other, the dad takes notice and crowd around Joseph to admire his masterful technique. That sounds good, I'm not gonna lie. You grilling the onion on the side, you gonna put the cheese and then the onion on top. Man, put some bacon on that motherfucker. And hey, look, bro. Yeah, you be my boy, you know what I'm saying? None of these giving me the vibes of my boy, you know? Because, uh, like Craig, he could be my, my boy. But we gotta hang out first. We only hung out like in college, you know what I'm saying? I haven't seen him in years. So I gotta see like really what's up with him. You probably didn't know, James, but Joseph's known around here for his grillmanship. <laughs> He's ungrillievable. <clears throat> I tried to get on his level, but I just can't catch up. <clears throat> Let us keep studying. He has a rare quality about him. I actually <clears throat> like that. That was cool. 
muster we keep talking about this? Mm. Can we just appreciate the artist? Hey. I never seen him make a mistake. Mm. Ooh, hold oh. on. Okay, we need to stop. This is getting too cheesy. Ah, come on, please stop. Oh my God, y'all are lame. All the children at the party boo the glorious display of puns and music. All right, guys, the food is ready. Please form an orderly barbecue. Ah, our barbecue. Oh. Let, let, let me show. Hey, man, bros. We all grab our food and hang out, enjoying perfectly cooked cheeseburgers. Huh? Man, it's so wild how all the all the dads live in the same cul-de-sac. Hey. Hope I'm saying that right. If I'm not, I'm sorry. Kind of nice, isn't it? It feels like there's a real community here. Totally helps when you're just a single dad trying to raise a kid. Oh. We're happy to have you here, man. I think you're gonna like this neighborhood a lot. Oh. Plus, Amanda seems to be getting along with all of the kids. If she decides to get into baby into the babysitting game, she'll really make a killing. Hey. Why don't you add all of us on Dad Book? Dad Book? Yeah, it's a great social network for dads to keep in touch with each other. We're all on it, so if you ever need to reach out to anyone, that's sim that's the simplest way to do it. Sorry, I'm just old fashioned dad. Social media goes over my head sometimes. Don't worry, Pops, I'll help you figure it out. The rest of the barbecue goes smoothly. We all trade stories and drink beer as our kids play on the lawn. Amanda breaks up a fight between Carmen and those weird twins. I think they wanted her soul. Yes. Oh, 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 oh. Yes. Welcome to the neighborhood. Oh, this is the, I, I, this is chapter one. You telling me I just finished chapter one in two parts? Ooh. But look, we're gonna have to stop here because I've been recording by hour and 20 minutes. I feel like these videos though, these videos gonna be longer videos. So I really hope y'all enjoy these long videos just like how it was with Frambo. Because um, this is a lot of dialogue. This is a lot of picking options. This is a lot of dads that I need to know. Hopefully I don't have another rendezvous. Um, <laughs> so it's like, you know, so we're gonna stop here. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I will see you in the next video.